It's just after midnight. Somewhere, a monitoring system blares a warning. Unauthorized access attempt detected. An engineer jumps online, eyes flicking across audit logs. The intruder isn't a stranger. They are an employee. The problem? A permission misconfiguration. The user had access to sensitive data they never should have seen. This is the new front line of software security, and it's not just about firewalls and encryption anymore. It's about authorization. Who can do what, with which data, under which conditions? Access control has quietly become the cornerstone of digital trust. It governs what users can see, change, or delete. It defines boundaries in everything from cloud storage to customer portals, financial apps, medical systems, and developer tools. And yet, access control is still a pain point for many teams. Complex to design, difficult to scale, and easy to get wrong. Pomit, sponsor of this video, believe that authorization should be powerful, flexible, and easy to implement. To understand where we're headed, we need to understand where we've been. This is the story of access control, from its rigid beginnings to its modern context-aware future. To understand how we arrived at this moment, the midnight alerts, the misconfigured roles, we need to rewind the clock and look at how access control began. Long before we had microservices, SaaS apps, or cloud-native platforms, software ran on massive centralized mainframes. Terminals were just input-output devices connected to a single system. Users were few, permissions were hard-coded, and access control was often manual or implicit, enforced by sysadmins, not programmable logic. Back then, access control wasn't a major concern because systems were isolated, networks were private, and most users worked within a tight organizational hierarchy. But things were about to change. As networked computing emerged in the 1970s and 80s, and multi-user operating systems became the norm, new questions arose. Who gets access to shared files on a server? Can two users see each other's data? What happens when someone changes jobs or teams? Security threats also began to evolve, from physical breaches to logical access abuse. Suddenly, the need for formalized, enforceable access policies became real. Much of the early thinking around access control came from classified information management. The US Department of Defense and Intelligence communities needed systematic ways to define who could access what based on national security clearances. This directly influenced the development of early models like Mac, which were codified in documents like the Orange Book, part of the Trusted Computer System Evaluation Criteria. These ideas seeded the first generation of programmable access control, but they were built for closed systems with well-defined hierarchies, not for the Internet age. By the 1980s and 90s, the rise of personal computing and client-server architectures added a new wrinkle. Every user now had their own device, and with it, their own files, preferences, and risks. Access control moved from centralized mainframes to individual machines and networked file servers. That's where discretionary access control, DAC, started gaining traction, reflecting a cultural shift toward user autonomy and productivity. At the same time, large companies began adopting directory services and role hierarchies in their IT systems. These early infrastructures laid the groundwork for what would become RBAC. The late 1990s and early 2000s brought the internet to the forefront of everything. Suddenly, access wasn't just about employees on a LAN, it was about customers, partners, contractors, apps, and APIs. Access control needed to adapt to millions of users, multi-tenant systems, global compliance requirements, mobile devices and BYOD policies, cloud-native and distributed architectures. It was no longer enough to rely on static user groups or hard-coded roles. Access needed to be contextual, dynamic, and scalable. By the 2010s, security breaches caused by misconfigured permissions or overly broad access became increasingly common. Broken access control climbed to the top of OWASP's top 10 security risks. Developers were now expected to implement robust access logic themselves, often reinventing wheels, hard coding conditions, or bolting on brittle ACLs, access control lists. Access control was no longer just an IT problem, it had become a core application concern and one of the most difficult engineering challenges of the modern era. Now, we're ready to understand the models that emerged to solve these challenges, each a product of its time, each trying to balance security, usability, and flexibility. Let's begin that journey, starting with the earliest formal models, Mac and DAC. Mandatory access control emerged in the early days of computing when the stakes were high and the environments were closed. Think defense systems, government data centers, military command terminals. The focus was on uniform control, no exceptions, no overrides. Under Mac, every object, like a file or database entry, has a classification, confidential, secret, or top secret. Every user has a clearance. The system enforces strict alignment between these labels. A mismatch? Access denied. Not even the data owner can change the rules only administrators can. This model is excellent for consistency and control, but lacks agility. 
It's rigid by design, there's no room for situational judgment or fast-moving collaboration. And that's exactly why it started to feel limiting as systems became more distributed and interactive. In contrast, discretionary access control takes a user-first approach. If you own a resource, you decide who can access it. You define permissions, just like sharing a Google Doc or setting read-write access in Unix or Windows. Back introduced flexibility, crucial in user-facing applications and collaborative environments. But with that flexibility came risk. Users could grant access too broadly, forget to revoke permissions, or make decisions without understanding the security implications. Over time, it became clear. Both Mac and DAC had value, but neither was equipped to handle the emerging complexity of modern applications. We needed a better model, one that could scale and strike a smarter balance. The search for a better balance between control and agility paved the way for the next evolution. Role-based access control arrived in the 90s as organizations sought a way to simplify permission management without sacrificing oversight. RBAC's premise was straightforward. Group users into roles like engineer, manager, or support agent and assign permissions to those roles. Instead of managing every user's individual permissions, you manage the permissions tied to their role. Add someone to the role, they inherit the access, change roles, and their permissions update automatically. RBAC is still one of the most widely implemented access models today, found in enterprise platforms, SaaS apps, HR systems, and admin portals. It reflects real-world job functions and enforces the principle of least privilege, so long as roles are well-designed. Despite its strengths, RBAC revealed limitations as systems grew more dynamic. Teams started experiencing role explosion, the creation of dozens or hundreds of roles to cover special cases like marketing EU contractor support level 2 or read-only project admin. Suddenly, the system that was supposed to simplify permissions became difficult to manage. Real-world teams quickly ran into these limitations. Picture a growing fintech startup with 80 employees. A developer spends weeks hard-coding roles for every team, finance, support, engineering, only to discover exceptions crop up constantly. One VP needs limited access to engineering dashboards, a contractor requires temporary analytics access, and the CEO wants to bypass role logic altogether. The result? A sprawling set of temporary rules that never get cleaned up. It became clear roles alone couldn't handle the nuances of modern collaboration, something more dynamic was needed. So the industry began asking a new question, not just who is the user, but what do we know about them, their context, and what they're trying to do. RBAC also struggles when access decisions depend on more than job title. What if a user can only access data during certain hours, or only for projects they created? RBAC has no native concept of context or ownership. To meet those needs, a more expressive model was born. Attribute-based access control, ABAC, allows permissions to be based on attributes about the user, the resource, and the environment. A policy in ABAC might say, allow access if the user's department is finance, the resources region is EU, and the current time is within working hours. Instead of writing dozens of roles, you write rules that evaluate properties dynamically. This opens up incredibly powerful and flexible permission systems, especially in regulated, multi-tenant, or customer-facing applications. For example, a healthcare app can enforce that only doctors assigned to a specific patient can view that patient's records. Or, a fintech platform might restrict large transactions to high-risk certified users during trading hours. These aren't edge cases, they're everyday requirements, and ABAC makes them manageable. Most modern systems implement a hybrid model, combining RBAC for base access and ABAC for advanced rules. The role gets you through the door, the attributes determine what you can do inside, but ABAC isn't a silver bullet. It requires good data hygiene and a clear policy framework. Without the right tools, policies can become hard to audit and test. That's where solutions like Permit.io bring clarity and control. Not all access decisions can be captured with roles or attributes. Sometimes access is about how users and resources are connected. But even context wasn't enough in every case. In collaborative platforms and interconnected systems, something else mattered, relationships. That's the idea behind relationship-based access control, Reback. It treats your system like a graph with users, resources, and the relationships between them as first-class citizens. If you've ever shared a document in Google Drive, you have used Reback. The platform checks whether a user is directly shared on the document, part of a group that has access, or holds a parent relationship, like being the project owner. Reback powers. Shared documents. Team-based resource ownership. Delegated permissions in SaaS. Multi-tenant collaboration models. Microservice to microservice trust chains. Reback is especially powerful in multi-tenant or hierarchical systems. It can infer access based on a single relationship, avoiding the need for manual role assignments or custom logic. 
Implementing Reback effectively requires a way to store and traverse relationship graphs. Solutions like Google Zanzibar and open source tools like SpiceDB have made this more accessible, but the model still introduces complexity in design, performance, and policy authoring. Permit helps bridge that complexity with a relationship engine that's easy to define and query, and integrates seamlessly with RBAC and ABAC logic. So what happens when a team needs the clarity of roles, the flexibility of attributes, and the realism of relationships all at once? Permit recognized a pattern. Most modern applications don't need just one access control model, they need them all. So they built a full stack authorization platform that supports RBAC for role-based permissions, ABAC for context-aware rules, Reback for relationship-drun access, Policy as code for GitOps and version control, Real-time policy propagation via OPA. No code and low code interfaces for easy policy creation. You define your access logic through Thier dashboard or APIs. Permit enforces it with real-time, low latency decisions directly in your app via SDKs or microservice integrations. They've also taken a firm stance on authorization architecture. Your application should not rely on static tokens like JWTs to carry authorization data. Instead, your access checks should query a live source of truth that reflects up to the second policies. Permit enables externalized authorization, decoupling access decisions from your app's core logic, making them easier to test, audit, update, and scale. Permit is designed to integrate cleanly with your stack, support your existing identity providers, and grow with your team's needs, from startup to enterprise. Whether you're launching a new product or modernizing an existing system, they provide the building blocks to get access control right the first time. They know most teams aren't building from scratch. In reality, access logic is often spread across microservices, monoliths, config files, and even UI logic. Permit was designed with that in mind. You can adopt it gradually. Start by externalizing one policy, then expand. Our SDKs, APIs, and GitOps integration allow your team to modernize without breaking what's already working. The next frontier in access control is adaptability. And as we look forward, we're not just solving today's problems, we're building for what comes next. With continuous access evaluation and AI-powered policy suggestions, systems can adjust access dynamically based on behavior, risk, and context, not just identity. Permit is actively exploring these integrations, using machine learning to suggest policy improvements, detect anomalies, and respond to new risk signals in real time. With privacy regulations and decentralized identity on the rise, we expect more access decisions to involve user consent and verifiable credentials. Permit.io architecture is already designed to integrate with external ID sources and flexible trust models. As edge computing grows, access control needs to work everywhere on devices, browsers, and remote nodes. Permits, SDKs, and APIs support real-time checks in distributed environments, ensuring consistency across your entire ecosystem. Access control has evolved from rigid rules to dynamic policy engines. It's been a long journey, from the mainframes of the past to the cloud-native platforms of today. But at its core, the challenge remains the same, getting the right access to the right people at the right time. From Mac and DAC to RBAC, ABAC and Reback, we now have the tools to model the real world with clarity and control. But models alone aren't enough. What developers need is a unified, developer-first platform that makes it simple to build with these models without sacrificing power. That's what they are building at Permit. Whether you're a solo developer or part of a global enterprise, our mission is to make secure, scalable access control a strength, not a struggle, because great products deserve great permissions. And next time your monitoring system pings at midnight, you'll know that your access control system is doing its job, confidently, accurately, and intelligently.